Welcome to the Coin Bureau Weekly News Roundup. My name is Jessica. And my name is Guy. Here are the top stories in crypto this week. BTC's big bounce. BTC crashes on concerns of Middle East escalation before rallying into the halving. Where is BTC headed next? ETH's potential bottom. ETH hits a multi-year low against BTC, suggesting that the bottom is in or the bottom is about to fall out. So what will ETH do? Tether and Toncoin, the largest stablecoin issuer, teams up with one of the largest crypto projects to create a global payment network. Why this is more significant than you think. Fed cuts cancelled. Fed officials make it clear that rate cuts won't be coming anytime soon, but signal an end to quantitative tightening. How this could result in new all-time highs in the markets. And a closer look at last week's top performing cryptos and where they could be headed next. All this and more in just a moment. Last week, BTC experienced an understandable amount of volatility given the circumstances. On the macro side, there were serious concerns about a potential escalation in the Middle East. Fortunately, these concerns appear to have subsided, evidenced by the subsequent decline in oil prices. Unfortunately, these macro concerns could soon re-emerge in Eastern Europe. If you're subscribed to our weekly newsletter, you'll know exactly why and what it could mean for crypto. If you're not subscribed to our weekly newsletter, be sure to do so using the link in the description. Now, on the crypto side, meanwhile, there were high hopes around the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong, as well as, of course, the Bitcoin halving. Now, although the spot Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong were approved, they won't be trading until the end of the month at the earliest, turning that bullish catalyst into a bit of a nothing burger. Similarly, The uncertainty around the Bitcoin halving could have been the reason why BTC didn't see the explosive price action that many were expecting. For context, there were concerns that Bitcoin miners could come under pressure after the halving due to the associated increase in mining costs. So far, though, major Bitcoin miners seem to be doing fine. The release of the Bitcoin runes protocol has presumably helped with this as it's resulted in a massive spike in transaction fees. We'll be doing a video about runes soon, by the way, so subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you don't miss it. But back to those spot Bitcoin ETFs. Now, as some of you may have heard, the spot ETFs in the United States saw their first day of net inflows in a week last Friday. This suggests that there was some speculative buying around the margins related to the halving. The runes frenzy likely contributed to BTC's price as well. The result was what you see here, price action that's been looking bullish over the last few days but doesn't compare well with recent weeks. Zooming out a bit on BTC's daily chart reveals that there's no cause for concern just yet. BTC has been chopping between 60 and 70k since late February. Slapping on the Relative Strength Index, or RSI, also reveals that BTC is the most oversold it's been since late January. To refresh your memory, this was when BTC suddenly fell below 40k. What followed was a six-week rally that almost took BTC to 74k. Not saying the same will happen again, but it's worth considering. Now, if you believe that BTC could be on the brink of another massive rally, then be sure to maximize your profits by taking advantage of the perks we have on the Coin Bureau deals page. We've got trading fee discounts of up to 60%, sign-up bonuses of up to $60,000, and much more on offer besides. These deals are only available for a limited time, so take advantage of them using the link below ASAP. Now, with the Bitcoin halving out of the way, everyone is wondering whether we'll finally see a rotation into ETH. For reference, ETH has been lagging against BTC since the crypto market began recovering last year, and its longer-term price charts reveal that it's been losing ground against BTC for almost two years. This is due to a combination of factors, the two biggest likely being the intense focus around BTC and Bitcoin-related catalysts, such as the ETFs, as well as the rise in interest rates around the world. The fact that investors can earn the same yield on bonds as they can staking ETH has likely resulted in lower ETH demand. If this is the case, 
then we could very well be on the brink of a massive rotation into ETH. Besides the fact that all the Bitcoin-related catalysts are out of the way, except for the Hong Kong ETFs, central bankers around the world, except the Fed, have signaled that they will begin lowering interest rates. More on that later. But back to the spot Bitcoin ETFs, the Hong Kong ones. Now, Hong Kong regulators didn't just approve spot Bitcoin ETFs last week. They also approved spot Ethereum ETFs. Recall that Hong Kong's spot Bitcoin ETFs will trade by the end of the month. Logically, this means the spot Ethereum ETFs will too. Now, while there's no guarantee that these ETFs will see inflows, it's well known that Ethereum is very popular with Chinese investors. For those who don't know, Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin is referred to as the V-God in China and actually speaks fluent Mandarin. It's pretty impressive. Anyways, assuming Ethereum is still popular with Chinese investors, it's possible that Hong Kong's spot Ethereum ETFs could see substantial inflows. This ultimately depends on whether Chinese investors will be allowed to get exposure, something that Bloomberg says is unlikely for the time being. Even so, there's no shortage of capital sloshing around Hong Kong, and there's even more of it sloshing around Asia more broadly. More importantly, there seems to be lots of demand for crypto in the region, as regulators in South Korea, Japan, and Singapore are reportedly rushing to roll out their own spot crypto ETFs now. When you combine this with the enormous liquidity campaigns that many of Ethereum's Layer 2s are launching, the result is a recipe for an enormous increase in ETH demand. Remember that ETH is used to pay for fees on Ethereum's Layer 2s and is also used as the primary source of collateral and trading pairs. This demand, if it materializes, would translate to a robust rally for ETH, with ETH's weekly chart foreshadowing a strong bounce from the Bollinger Band moving average. It's too soon to say how high ETH could go, but a medium-term target of around $3,400 seems to be on the cards, roughly 10% from here. The caveat is that Ethereum seems to be in the sniper scope of regulators. If you watched our video about whether ETH is a security, you'll know the SEC has been investigating entities in Ethereum's ecosystem. It's possible that we could get news of an official enforcement action in the coming weeks. Speaking of regulatory scrutiny, Tether and Tuncoin are two other crypto projects that have received their fair share over the years. The difference is that both have squared up, with Tether now working with US authorities and Tuncoin paying a fine to the SEC and winding down its ICO back in the day. If you're a member of the Coin Bureau Club, then you'll know we did an in-depth review of Tuncoin a few months back. You'll also know that we predicted that Tether would begin working closely with Tuncoin. This was in early December of last year. Fast forward to today and our prediction appears to have come true. At the Token 2049 event here in Dubai last week, Tether CEO Paolo Arduino and Telegram co-founder Pavel Durov announced a partnership that will see USDT and XAUT, Tether's gold-backed token, integrated into Tuncoin's ecosystem. FYI, Tuncoin was originally created by Telegram and remains closely affiliated with it. Now, believe it or not, but this announcement could be the most significant in the crypto industry this year. That's simply because the goal of the partnership appears to be the creation of an alternative financial system that is international in scale. To put things into perspective, Telegram has almost 1 billion users. Now consider that Tuncoin recently launched an incentive program to get users to verify their identities using novel palm scanning technology. It stands to reason that the purpose of this program is to introduce the KYC requirements that a payment system would be subject to. So, this begs the question of how the incumbents will respond to the fact that one of the largest crypto companies has partnered with one of the largest social media platforms to create an alternative financial system. Believe it or not, but the answer could be competition instead of a crackdown. That's simply because USDT is backed by US government debt. This means that everyone using USDT for investing, trading, or saving is essentially subsidizing the US government spending. The fact that Tether is working with US authorities also means that these transactions can all be closely tracked. As such, the real question is who the competitors to the Tether Tungcoin payment system will be. 
The answer is probably Circle plus another smart contract cryptocurrency, presumably Solana. This may sound crazy until you remember that Solana was once noted as being the official blockchain for USDC. Of course, it's possible that Circle will pick another smart contract cryptocurrency due to Solana's outage and congestion issues. We probably won't know which blockchain Circle has picked until stablecoin regulations are passed in the US, something which could happen sooner rather than later. The catch, however, is that this assumes that Circle and its backers will choose to compete rather than orchestrate a crackdown. Given that Circle is backed by the likes of BlackRock, it's possible that Tether, Tuncoin, and even Telegram could see renewed regulatory scrutiny when their payment system starts to take off. On that note, you can find out how Tether has been handling regulations, what else the company has been up to, and what the stablecoin giant is planning by checking out the recent interview we did with Paolo himself. The link to that will be down in the description. Now, whereas regulatory uncertainty has been one of the biggest bearish factors on the crypto side, uncertainty around rate cuts has been one of the biggest bearish factors on the macro side. By now, most of you will know that rate cuts are looking increasingly unlikely, at least from the Fed. That's just because the US economy has remained strong, despite the rate hikes the Fed imposed last year. The same is true, though, of inflation, which has been a problem for the Fed since its purpose is to bring inflation back down to 2%. With unemployment below the Fed's 4% target, it can leave rates higher for longer or even hike them again. Now, in theory, this is a problem for the markets because assets tend to perform poorly when interest rates are high. In practice, though, this hasn't been a problem because of all the liquidity, aka money supply, that's been coming online because of relentless US government spending, which continues unrestrained. There is one exception, though, and that's when long-term interest rates rose late last year. For those unfamiliar, the Fed's rate hikes and cuts only influence short-term interest rates. Long-term interest rates are influenced by the free markets, specifically the bond markets and bond yields. Obviously, the Fed can influence long-term interest rates via the bond markets as well. If it wants to lower long-term interest rates, it will buy bonds via the banking sector in a process known as quantitative easing or QE. When bonds are bought, their prices go up and the yields they offer go down. Conversely, if the Fed wants to raise long-term interest rates, it will allow the bonds it purchased to mature. In other words, it will stop buying bonds in a process known as quantitative tightening, or QT. The absence of big Fed buys causes bond prices to go down and the yields they offer to go up. Now, here is where things get interesting. Despite the Fed's QT, long-term interest rates weren't being affected until fairly recently. That's because the Treasury Department had been financing US government spending by issuing short-term bonds, resulting in a relative shortage of long-term bonds. As basic economics dictates, less supply with the same or more demand causes prices to rise, which in this case causes bond yields to come down. And in this case, the lack of new long-term bond supply had, until recently, been enough to offset the lack of long-term bond demand coming from the Fed. As we've seen, however, long-term interest rates have begun to creep up because of rising bond yields. Lo and behold, the Fed is now discussing slowing down its QT program, which basically means that it will begin buying more US bonds. At the same time, the Treasury will soon be buying back its own bonds. And yes, you did hear that correctly. The US government will soon begin buying back its own debt, something that hasn't happened in almost 25 years. This is expected to occur sometime this summer, and it will further lower bond yields and long-term interest rates by extension. This will be extremely bullish for markets. Between now and then, though, the crypto market could move lower because of poor liquidity conditions, something we explained in a recent video about the crypto dip. In the short term, though, it looks like crypto is long overdue a recovery rally. Don't forget, though, nothing goes up only or down only. And with that in mind, it's about time we looked at last week's top performing cryptos. So, Jessica, take it away. 
Thank you, Guy. Well, last week's top performing cryptos were Core, Bonk, Arweave, Sui, and Beam. Starting with Core, its Core coin appears to have pumped due to the announcement that the Bitcoin project will be launching BTC staking. As you can see, Core's price rallied to a key resistance level around $2. If it manages to break above, it could retest its recent highs of $4 which would in turn foreshadow a rally to $6. This depends on broader market conditions, which could cause a rejection at this level instead. Next up, Bonk appears to have pumped on the news that the meme coins community is voting to burn a small portion of its supply and that the project has launched a new website. Like Core, Bonk's price rallied to a key resistance level consisting of many zeros and the number two. So let's just say two. If Bonk can get above two, then it could likewise rally to its recent high of around four, and from there go as high as six. This again does depend on broader crypto market conditions. As for Arweave, AR appears to have pumped due to the ongoing development of AO, a so called hyper parallel computing for decentralized computation. Like Core and Bonk, AR's price rallied to a key resistance level in this case around $30. Notably, this resistance level extends back to the previous crypto bull market. If AR can get above this level, $45 would be on the cards, along with a potential rally to previous all-time highs of around $60, market conditions permitting. When it comes to SWE, its SWE coin appears to have pumped on the news that the crypto project has partnered with a subsidiary of ByteDance, the company behind TikTok, to work on GameFi and SocialFi. As you might have guessed, Sui also rallied to a key resistance level of around $1.4 and could likewise see a recovery rally to $2 and $2.5 if it breaks out. I'll repeat that a rejection is much more likely if broader market conditions become bearish. Last but not least, we have Beam, whose Beam token appears to have pumped due to the ongoing partnership with Immutable X, a gaming focus layer two on Ethereum. Beam is a gaming focus subnet of Avalanche, FYI. Surprise, surprise, Beam also rallied to a key resistance level around three cents and could rally back up to its recent highs of around 4.5 cents if it breaks above, potentially triggering a larger rally to six cents. Let's just hope that the rest of the crypto market creates the bullish conditions necessary for all of this to happen. Note that if you do want to keep track of which cryptos are pumping, but also where you can trade them, be sure to check out the Coin Bureau Insider Telegram channel using the link in the description. And that is all for today's Coin Bureau Weekly Crypto Review. If you enjoyed it, then you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and bell icon too. Don't forget to check out our deals page where we have massive trading fee discounts and sign-up bonuses of up to $60,000 on some of the best exchanges, only for the viewers of this channel. Also, if you do want to pick up some snazzy crypto merch, the Coin Bureau merch store has you covered. You can find the link to those resources and many others in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all in next week's episode.